what we learned in 2023, we had the, the greatest example, the greatest case study that has happened in the past, I'll call it five years. And that was with Justine Scott Collide. She has a song that came out in 2014 and broke in 2023. Nine years after it came out, that's when it broke. So I tell people, if you want to work your music in this day and age, the best thing to focus on is a catalog of music that's already out, especially if you're an independent artist, because you already own the catalog. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Brandman Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. And today we got two special guests. We got J.R. McKee, now a, a, a regular friend of the podcast. He, he might have been on the podcast more than anybody else at this point. Yeah, number one guest, number one guest. <laughs> number one guest. Yeah. Yes, sir. CEO, NPR Global, all around just entrepreneur, music marketer, uh, on, uh, manager, you know, exec. Yeah, just call me, it. media, media marketer, you know, content marketer. Just anything you can think of and put marketer behind it, that's what I do. Makes yeah, you happy. Yeah, yeah. He's no longer a music mar uh, marketer. He's just playing with house money now. We just, just a marketer. <laughs> and then we got Drew DeLeon. What's yeah. good, fam? What's good, y'all? Also one of the founders of, um, of NPR. NPR Global, uh, CEO and founder of Digilog. All around music exec. He behind the scenes touching stuff that y'all might not even know he out here. But just know this man is official out here. He's yeah. official. <laughs> hey, glad to have y'all on today, man, because obviously y'all know marketing brand, that's our main talk. Like that's what that's our, our, our core topic. We talk about a lot of stuff, but that's that's the sweet spot. And you guys are really doing it at a very high level, been doing it for longer than us, for sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I, we gotta put the numbers up. I don't know, but but we we we've been peers for a long time. We've been doing for it sure. together for a long time. For sure. Yeah. Hey, hey nah, I, I, I was probably still still in school when y'all started. <laughs> <laughs> but both you guys have dropped um, a dope playbook yes. for the year, mm -hmm. um, and we definitely gonna point y'all how to, the way to how to check that out. But I want to walk through. The playbook for 2024 as y'all have broken it down all right and there's three areas that stuck out to me that just immediately yeah uh, you got the community culture and commerce right right but so i want to yes. get we'll get into like some of the specific things y'all work and learn maybe on a higher level in big campaigns and stuff but just those three principles alone uh Ali, can y'all break that down for us well well let me start by by saying this like um when it comes to digital marketing, that's true as the guru. You know what um, I mean? Um, I, I met him. He was the like head this. of digital marketing at Alamo Records. Um, and so w when I when I learned his position, I didn't really know what it was until I met him. You know what I mean? I just knew marketing, period. But, uh, like, I didn't know, like, it takes a savant to, like, really. Because everything I did prior to even going to Alamo was um, in the streets. You know, going to the DJs, you know, going to the club, like, the digital age came and I met him and I'm like, okay, what you do is probably the most important thing to this thing. You know what I mean? And so this is the guru. This is behind, behind all these platinum records, all these broken artists is, is him. And so when I started my business, there was really nobody else I needed, but him, I'm like, yo, if I can get Drew, I know this business is going to be successful. And so I, first of all, let me say that I, I had to have an entrepreneur talk with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that, that was a, yeah. That was a tough talk. I had to have an entrepreneur talk because Drew Drew had been first he was in finance and then came to music, but he had already always been um a corporate a corporate person. You know, he, he had never been an entrepreneur. So I had to tell him like, Lo, like, bro, you just broke raw wave, you know what I mean? Number one billboard artist, you know what I mean? I'm like, imagine if you had a percentage of that instead of the salary you're getting. I had to I had to you know, I had to give him the like and so you know what I mean? I gave him a whole breakdown. I was like, you know, what you think, bro? Like, what? How, how, how you feel about that? And so I don't know. How did you feel about that, bro? At first, I was like, man, I was, I was a little, I was a little scared. <laughs> I was like, you know, because you know, when we first met, like mm -hmm. we started at Alamo Records, right? This was like at the height yeah. of the pandemic, so we got to see the height of like Rod and the trajectory of, of him and him like getting that number one album. Yeah. and so forth and millions of streams but like you know Gerard has always been an entrepreneur i mean mm -hmm. i mean i was an entrepreneur in different aspects but in my in my mind i was like you know i, I like to see that check every two weeks <laughs> so, um but he was like yo there's no reason why you know they're making x amount of streams and you're getting paid this and you're doing all the work mm -hmm. so he's like look we're gonna start npr 
music power respect and we're gonna like partner with these incredible songwriters artists that have crazy pen pen games yeah and we're gonna like build catalog for them and then you're gonna have equity because you're gonna do the work and then you're gonna see the results you're not, not right. see it tomorrow but, but you'll see it. you'll see it over time yeah and, uh, we got to see that with money long right our first artist partner and you know it i didn't see it at first but i knew the music was always going to be competitive but it took us 14 tracks to get yeah. hours and hours and yeah. it was at the height of like you know towards the end of the pandemic height of tiktok and and you know the world was going through a crazy time but i think the, the world needed music like hours and hours and you know obviously you know money she's an incredible songwriter so yeah just, the song went and just went crazy <clears throat> and, and so I, I had to i had to put that out there first because what how we got to the digital marketing playbook if everybody watching this is familiar with me they know before that i've all before this year i've always been talking about streaming you know streaming executive you know how to how to make the best out of the tools at the dsps etc cetera, etc cetera. but then come 2023 a lot of that stuff didn't matter anymore you know what i mean it it <clears throat> the TikTok wasn't the TikTok that we knew. You know what I mean? DSPs and playlists weren't the playlists that we knew. You know what I mean? You're, you're no longer getting these results. And so now it was just only about social media, like pretty much predominantly. And when it came to that, I'm like, well, the only way to win on social media is digital marketing. And so I went to him again and I said, you know, what I've been teaching is kind of obsolete right now. I was like, the thing that's going to work the best is what you do. I'm like, they need to learn digital marketing if they want to be successful. <clears throat> and so that's how the digital marketing playbook came about because we're in this space right now where that's pretty much your best bet. Understanding digital marketing is your best bet at breaking as an artist right now. And, and go behind that, it's your best bet at breaking anything, a brand, a product, a company, any any marketing that you want to do. If you're trying to sell something um, or, or be a service for sale, you have to understand digital marketing. And so that's why we needed the digital marketing playbook and we, we needed we needed drew like we people need to know what he knows and understand what he knows and so that's what this came from um and now we can get back to your question so when when we when we talked about that drew was basically telling me like when you're when you're digital marketing you're, you're pretty much fighting five battles and he was like you know there what i call them is well he said this we said what he calls them is the five c's and he was like, you're, you're, you're dealing with community, catalog, conversation. Um, what am I missing? Um, commerce. Commerce and culture. He was like, those are, those are the puzzles you have to solve to be good at digital marketing. And so with that being said, um, <laughs> Drew, what are the three C's? you? Because you, you mentioned three out of the five. Hey, well, I didn't, I didn't know there was five of them. Yes, there's so, five of them. I want to hear all five. But okay. I, I okay. said community, <laughs> culture, and commerce, yeah. but I... Um, I really intrigued actually to hear how that catalog plays in there because I didn't yeah. that one. Yeah. And culture, yep. Well, okay, so I, I, I'll, I'll give you catalog and then I'll let Drew give you the next one. Yep. Um, what we learned in 2023, we had the, the greatest example, the greatest case study that, that probably has happened in the past, I'll call it five years, and that was with Justine and Scott Collide. She has a song that came out in 2014 and broke in 2023. Nine years after it came out, that's when it broke. You know what I mean? And, and so I, I tell people, if you want to work your music in, in this day and age, the best thing to focus on is a catalog of music that's already out, especially if you're an independent artist, because you already own a catalog. You paid for it. You already did what you had to do to, to, to own it versus going and, you know, spending that 5000 it takes to pay for a beat, make a new music video, like everything it takes to put new music out, mm -hmm. you can save that money and put it into the music you already own. If, if it's a hit sonically, if you like, I know I have hit records in my catalog, then it can be a hit. You just have to go work that record. And so that's why catalog has become so important because it's like, bro, you got 30 songs out. You don't need new music. You need to work these songs. And you can put out new music as you go, but what's most important is what you already own because it's gonna cost you less money and just time and energy to work those records versus going and spending money on a new record, spending money, money, time, and energy. You can just spend the time and energy, you know what I mean? And break a record from 2014 like we did. You know what I'm saying? And so catalog has become the most prominent music you own. It's it's the most um it holds the most value. Let's put it that way. You know what I mean? Why why 
this is this works for for you guys right because when i think about you guys program a lot of times you guys come in with ads and things like that and you do what you test the ads you test the music to see which song is the best song well listen we can forego that process because all we we have these songs that are already out we can look at the analytics and say we can tell what song is the best song we can say okay listen they've been listening to this and it doesn't have to be large numbers but if it has the most numbers out of your numbers you right. know what i mean if all of your songs that are out only have a hundred thousand streams to date and they've been out five years but this one particular song has a quarter million streams to date that tells you that's the song i need to go make content to you know what i mean so it didn't cost me the money of running ads and doing etc to figure out what the song was all i had to do was look at my catalog look at the numbers and say okay this is the song i need to attack this is a song I need to focus on. Like, I, there's literally gold in your catalog. You just had to go dig for it. Yeah. What do you say to artists who feel like, nah, I just want to drop something new? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to stop you from dropping nothing new. But, I mean, as an entrepreneur and a business person, you had to think financially. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to cost me X, Y, and Z to drop right. this new music. You know what? Why don't I work with I already own? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, now, you can drop new music, but the money that it costs you, you could have put into a new content for the music you already own. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's just that simple. But I'm not telling you don't drop new music, but I, what I'm telling you is you have gold you already own. There, There's gold in your basement. You just got to go dig it out. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. makes me think about like, just the fact that attention is expensive, mm -hmm. but then you find those moments where it gets cheaper, right? And mm -hmm. if there's that song that works, it's yeah. like, all right, this is giving me the cheapest amount of attention. Why don't I get as much as I can from this one? Because I'm not guaranteed guaranteed that from the next one. Right. Yeah. And I think talking to a lot of artists, I think a lot of times they think in such short periods of time mm -hmm. that they yeah. don't realize. All right, like once that song pops off finally, mm -hmm. that's just gonna give everything else life, and then I'm gonna move right. on. It's like it's, it's it's just it's just really just gonna give you more life at the yeah. end of the day. Right. But I feel like a lot of artists just think about like I don't know what am I on right now. And like, if this doesn't work today, then it just doesn't work. You know and what I mean? They they're looking for the new shiny thing, and to them, the the music is the new shiny thing. You know what I mean? But it's it's just like the the saying, like the grass is going to be greener where you water it. You know what I mean? So if you already own this grass, it'll get green if you water it. You know, don't go hopping the fence looking for their grass. Water what you already own. Right. You know what I mean? And right. so that that's why catalog is so important. And basically in the playbook, I teach you how to work that catalog, how to build content around that catalog. You know what I mean? How to get that gold out of there. That's that's one of the main things we talk about in the playbook. Um, and then, you know, one of the other C's is culture, which is mm -hmm. this man, like, bro, like <laughs> the genius level. Is, and so I'm going to let him explain culture because you, you can't really market in, unless you're in in tune with the culture. You know what I mean? So, yeah. No. no. You know, real quick, before I go into culture, too, I just want to add, like, I think there's just a, an assumption just because artists, labels, and distributors, whoever it may be, are just kind of following the same model. Like, you know, I'm going to tease the music for two weeks, put the put the record out, tease the record for two weeks after, and hope for the best. And the reality is, and this is something that we, we preach in the playbook, is that, you know, we're, we're you know attention is the biggest currency but mm -hmm. you can't expect your fans to consume your music within two weeks because the reality is they're, they're consumed with everything else life yeah. other pieces of content other things that they're interested in so you have a you have to have a longer runway and one of the things that we really focus on around catalog and new music is like post release one month three months six months nine months 12 months you know it takes time and, and i think even just teens case obviously that was eight years later but you just never know what how music is going to react because it's a lot of this is fan led anyway so you want to give them more more reason more time to like digest it mm -hmm. even the most recent campaign you know you know we worked on um with one of our clients you know with money like made for me you know that record came out september 2023 and then that started to really take off winter of 2023 and then and then january kind of took off uh, because of certain moments and then eventually it was fan led but you know um that also be, be, is because of the genre of music but also just the way that fans consume music you know it just takes time yeah. um and, and i think you, you got to give your, your fans grace like you know they can't, you can't keep promoting and expect them to like like it you know you got to give them time to like you know digest it yeah 
So just wanted to point that out. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.